What made you decide to pursue voice lessons? My favorite vocalists were always these people with these very natural, uh, untrained sort of voices like uh, Bob Dylan or Jeff Mangum or Neil Young, people with these like rough realness to their voice. And I think I always sort of thought that the path to that was uh, to, 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 to not know anything about what you're doing. <laughs> and I can sort of, one of the things I sort of end up getting was that the path to having natural voices is paying attention to what you're singing. And uh, I, I spent, I spent so many years just like not really thinking about it that much. And, but being on a stage singing, but like not really thinking about my voice as an instrument that much and more of this like expression. Um, and it's funny, like I just, I came to vocal training, um, you know, I was in a band at the time, but uh, I came at it from an odd angle. I it was, at the time it was sort of uh, self-care. Um, it was a thing that I wanted, that I thought about before and I wanted to get better at. And I was sort of just doing it for me that I thought this was, this is a nice thing. I am improving your skills. <laughs> yeah. So what, what allowed you to feel less worried that training might take away the naturalness? It's, it's interesting. I had talked to some people and they had um, more or less told me I was wrong. Uh, so yeah, that, that's always, it's always good to like have trust, trusted people tell you you're wrong. <laughs> um, and I, I, for me, even at the time, it was like an experiment, you know, it's like, huh, I wonder, I wonder what I can do with this as some knowledge. And a, a lot of my, a lot of my musicians, I, I, I've been trained in the, the instruments that I, that I play on a day-to-day -day basis for all very self-taught. Um, and so I always kind of come at it from that thing, but recently I've had some, you know, a couple of things I'm like, Oh, you know, training's all right. Yeah. I can, <laughs> you might be able to learn a thing or two. Yeah. That's cool. I think that's true for a lot of people in many different popular musics. I think at its root, it is about being an individual and trying to find, you know, what is inside of each of us that's unique to us and what we can do. Um, with just whatever natural stuff we've got inside of us. And I, I think it's a big part of what makes popular music styles what they are, is that yeah. drive, you know, to, to find I mean, what you do as a person and to have it not be tarnished by a larger system that might try to make you conform to something, you know? I, th I feel like yeah. at its root, it's all about, like, sticking it to the man, you know? And at some cool. point, voice lessons yeah. are sort of the man, I mean, you know. <laughs> I, I grew up in a in a small town in the country where, like, uh, it was never an option. And like, like so many things that I learned, like even in my profession and thing in uh, my career, has just been self taught. You know, I, I I taught myself most of the things I've done for the the rest of my I spent my the rest of my life doing. So why not music too? Uh, and yeah, um, but it, it is funny that, you know, with technology and things like that, I, I would seek out help and seek out training and when I needed it, but I was always a little reluctant to do that with music. Uh, I mean, it feels like expressionistic and a part of yourself and you don't want to, you don't want to lose any of that, but yeah. Yeah. So then through lessons, what did you feel like you gained? You know, how did you stick with your drive to to be natural in your sound and in your music and and then use what tools you were given? So what were some things that you got out of the lessons toward that end? Yeah, I would say, I mean, one of the takeaways is that like that thing of against like being natural or being trained is sort of this uh, false dichotomy mm. because you're 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 always thinking about your voice or you're you're affecting your voice and you're affecting things whether you're thinking about it or not you're if if you're not trained and you're not thinking about it in the right way you're still doing things uh, and you're still affecting your voice and you're still uh, copying things or you're thinking about in the back of your head, you're doing stuff. So whether training was coming from someone else 
or training was coming from yourself making choices about the sounds that you wanted to make. Either way, you realized it's still choice. It's still a choice no to do something out. with, yeah. yeah. Right. There's, there's no purity or opting out of thinking about it. You're either thinking about it in coming from an informed place or you're or you're just making it up as you go along. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what did you feel more informed about by the time you were finished? You know, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I think I learned, I come at it from a, from a spot where you can, we're thinking about the shapes and the feel and sort of more the physicality of it helped a lot because I think a lot of my thinking about it was up here, you know, and more abstract and thinking about the things that I liked and, and how to get those uh, is, uh, it, there's a physicality to it. It's like using your hands. It's like carving a you know piece of wood or something. Like you have to think about the way your body works. It can't. It can't all be in the head. <laughs> mm. And a lot of times, especially if you try and do new skills. I mean, whether it's like playing piano and training your left hand to be able to be as responsive as your right, that you get these ideas about how how much control you have over your body and how much control you think you have over your body mm. and the muscles. And even, I, I mean, there's, there's some, there's some physical things that you, you learn that about yourself and you're like, Oh yeah, I move my fingers all the time. And then, but learning to play piano, you find out it's like, Oh, I, I move my fingers all the time, but I don't have control the way that I think I do. And um, I think voice lessons sort of taught me that about, different muscles in my body that I think, you know, I think I control my throat, but like there's, there's things going on there that you don't have complete control over unless you practice. Yeah. Right. That's great. So really connecting to the fact that singing is a physical bodily act and to be more connected with the body is a great way to feel like you have more options in terms yeah. of making the sounds that you want to make. Yeah, and I think before I would think about things in terms of, you know, I don't know, wanting to sound like something else or want to, or the, the end processes rather than, I it, it got me to be a bit more process oriented about mm. people, where enjoying the process a bit more of like, rather than thinking about the end goal of what you want it to sound like, trying to figure out the, the in between, you know, how, how do you, how do I affect myself and what comes out if I do these different things. Yeah. So how to engineer, like reverse engineering the, the sound that you, yeah, you wanted at the yeah. end. That's great. And I mean, I guess like, like painting or something, if you try and paint a picture and you know what you want it to be at the end, um, unless you're really well-trained, it probably isn't going to turn out that well. <laughs> but if you start enjoying the process, like how brush strokes go on, how you, how you, for all things and how you create things. That's how you end up with something interesting that might not be exactly what you started out with, but. Yeah, right.